Welcome back to the show. We're about to learn the secret sauce. Excellent. So we're talking about co-working spaces because we're in a yes. co-working space. Anything. It's all it's all it's all on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, still recorded. We'll just edit all this in together. But um you shouldn't have to commute to a co-working space. So you found a, a lovely co-working space. Yes. How long have you been working remote life? Oh man. Uh let's see. So I would say probably like four or five years ago, the company that I was working at. Uh, kind of made that transition to fully remote. We had hired enough people. Oh, we I pre pandemic? Pre pandemic, yeah, 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 yeah. So we hired enough people where it was like, okay, we're kind of teetering on being remote a remote company and then we finally i think the the tipping point was we hired a product manager who was remote and at that point it was like <laughs> all bets are off right like if we have yeah. someone who's managing people remotely like you know let's yeah. not pretend no anymore. reason to come in the office and yeah. get the what are the ethos the culture yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. energy <laughs> yeah the thing is like um so like at github previous employer um everything was remote yeah. first yeah and my my entire career at github no one in the office worked with me <laughs> It was like this people I would talk to and like yeah, yeah. people flew in. Uh, and then up until like the pandemic, I had someone in San Francisco who worked on my team. Uh, but like we were still remote because yep. the pandemic. So it was like it, I just spent all that time going to this awesome office getting awesome food. But I always worked from home. Like I was remote. Yeah. You know, it's so funny. But I, like I would do the same thing. It was like we would have meals in there, like lunch there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And those are the days that I went in. Because, you know, it's like you, it's nice to get that socialization i guess and to yeah. have an excuse for that and meals are clearly the best way to do that yes. open sauced yeah yeah um, yeah <laughs> that pizza <laughs> and but yeah it's like you know if you if you don't have your whole team in a space it's kind of like there's this weird social thing that kind of happens where it's like people who are remote kind of feel like maybe you're back channeling on certain things yes. and it's like there's no way to convince anybody of anything at that point and so it's yeah. kind of like whatever we're all remote we all jump on the same zoom calls like we just yes. like there's no it, it becomes this thing that's kind of like in between you and like that kind of sucks and yeah like that that is a really hard transition for a lot of companies i think that a lot of companies are like remote first but like the companies who try to like tack it on, like a, there yeah. were a ton of companies in the, during the pandemic who were trying to figure it out for the first time. And like, it's brutal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if you do the whole thing where you're in a conference room and then like the people who are remote can't hear or the mics go out or yep. the, the, the camera goes out or whatever. And it's like, oh, well, I guess we'll just take good notes. Yeah. And then you're like, oh man, I'm remote. And like, do I show up to the meetings? Does it matter yeah. if I show up to the meetings? Uh, does it matter when I'm online? Like, do I have to be overlapped a whole half a day or whatever that a lot of time zone issues and working anyway we're going on like a different path in the conversation <laughs> let's actually take a step back and uh we'll, we'll take a pause on remote talk yeah and uh why don't you intro who are you like <laughs> literally <laughs> haven't even said your name at this point i like it this is the best way to start um uh, should i look at this guy oh uh, sure go for it <laughs> okay uh so i'm chantastic uh michael chan uh i guess i don't know i go by chantastic most places on the internet i have definitely called you chan sometimes yeah <laughs> because i think chantastic as a handle first <laughs> yeah it's like it's it, that's my preferred it took me i i kind of had this weird thing where i was like uh maybe i should go by michael because it's kind of weird for people to call me chan and then no, I was you gotta like, lean into it screw it i like it i like chan like all my best friends call me chan like you know that's the, that's what i go with now so yeah chan chantastic on the internet um and yeah and so right now i work with a company called chromatic and uh i we maintain storybook and build a visual testing service um around storybook and it's um it's really awesome i was using it before i joined and now i just uh get to make some cool content you know, show people how to use it and uh, kind of build better design systems and front ends in the, awesome. in the meantime. Yeah. For the record, I've been using it before you joined as well. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so uh, I, I try to get like some sort of origin story as part of these conversations. So yeah. like, I'm curious, like, how did you get yourself in the tech? Oh, man. Uh, yeah. So I think, you know, we've shared this before, but it's like we've always had like an interest in tech. Yeah. And for me, I was always kind of like in tech adjacent type of like interests. Um, I started like, I think it was like seventh or eighth grade. I took a computer science class and I was like very much the worst 
person <laughs> in this class. So it, seventh, eighth grade, like computer science is only like you're learning C or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I think it was like we had an option. We could learn C++ or Java, and I sucked at both of them. And <laughs> it was like, I remember my computer science teacher was like, uh, this probably isn't for you, uh, which is funny <laughs> because <laughs> like a handful of years later, uh, I think you worked at Yahoo. And then uh, when Yahoo closed their San Diego office, uh, he applied for a job at the company that I was uh, working at. And you're, so, you're a teacher. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Did he get the job? Uh, no. Yeah, Probably should have no. said, this is not for you. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it, missed opportunity. <laughs> All right, he's probably watching, so. Uh, no, he was, he, he was an awesome teacher, and uh, it, was, it was just kind of a funny, uh, you know, funny thing. But, um, yeah, so... I had this idea that like computer science really wasn't for me, even though I really enjoyed tech. Um, but I found that I really enjoyed building websites. And so I was working with my um, dad in uh, our, a company that we're running together. We we're importing and exporting furniture. And I was like, okay, well, I can make a, I can make a website for us. And so I learned all the basic like HTML, CSS, and that's it, just HTML, CSS to like put together like a basic site for us. And I just really loved it. I loved the structure of it, the rules of it, the organization of it. And um, I kind of would tinker with that as much as I could. And that was like back, in, I mean, I think it was back in like 2008, 2009, when there was like that huge economic reset, yeah. collapse, whatever you want to call it's it. It's a pinnacle moment for millennials, man. <laughs> it was. It was yeah. a big moment. Um, and so I had to kind of figure out what to do really quickly. And, uh, I had, you know, just started my family, you know, we had, uh, you know, we were pregnant and we like, I was, you know, yeah, I, I mean, I, both of you are pregnant. <laughs> it is a process that you both go through. Yes. True. Yeah. Yeah. As a process, we were pregnant and, um, it was interesting, like just really kind of struggling with my own personal identity around like that battle between like knowing in my head, like, oh, this career isn't for me. Yeah. from the things that I've experienced and been told, but then feeling like ah, this draw towards like, well, maybe it is like, maybe I could unlock something here. And uh, the, the pivotal moment took when I was trying to apply for a job, um, you know, around, around here for a, like a, I don't know, some basic level, like entry level accounting for like a for city. And uh, I went to this job application rolled up and, learned that it was like a group one and there were like 500 people going for the same job. <laughs> okay. I've never been to a group interview. Is this a common thing? And I think it's, SoCal? I think it's like a, like a, like a city, uh, type Got of it. type of thing. And sort so of like just... the bachelor, but for a job. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Excellent. I was living an episode, my own personal hell of the, an episode of the bachelor. And, uh, yeah, it was crazy. The, uh, um, and they're like, yeah, so we only have one role, but we'll like hold everyone like, on, you know, on file or whatever. It's like, I was like, I'm not going to get this. Like, so I didn't even like, I didn't even bother. I was like, I got to figure something else out. So, um, that night I was like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to really commit to this web thing. I have a tiny little bit of runway. I was on unemployment. And so I was like, okay, so if I'm going to make a change, now's the time to make it. Cause I yeah. got like three months before we're really in a bad way. And, uh, yeah. And so I just decided to do that, tried to find jobs on Craigslist that I could do. I was doing like email signatures and like just changing text on Wait, WordPress sites. Email signatures and, as in like you're just uh, putting like <laughs> sincerely this person? Like, <laughs> well, like, you know, when uh, like if someone needed something that was like a little bit more formatted. So, you know, okay. maybe included images, but then also, uh, I don't know phone numbers and faxes yeah that is so stuff. specific but also <laughs> like is. something anybody could do i guess nowadays anybody can do this totally yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm sure that there's probably like tools or canva templates or whatever for that now but yeah or, or like, gmail <laughs> exactly exactly but yeah this is like you know it's like people just i don't know needed stuff like that done and so i was like i'll, I'll take any work that i can get in the like a, in the field or adjacent to the field and, uh, you know, figure it out. And so I got really good with HTML and CSS and table layouts and all that stuff. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. I mean, that's, I mean, that's one way to have to come up and like get your feet wet on yeah. getting in the industry, but also figuring out that maybe this is a role for you. So like, did you do a bunch of these like Craigslist jobs and then land a full-time thing? Yeah. So I did a bunch of that and then I would 
you know, it's just kind of that, like that standard hustle, right? Like you just roll whatever you got into like pitching the next thing. And so, um, I had some friends who had been doing web development professionally for a handful of years. And I would just be like, Hey, I'm doing this. If you have anything that fits these like skills that I have and you don't want to do it, like, I'm happy to do it. Like, just, just let me know. I'll do it on the cheap. And it's, it's kind of funny like I think something that I learned during that time is that there's always work that people who are more advanced in their career don't want to do. Yes. Always. Yeah. I mean, like I have like I'm sure you have a big stack of this. Oh yeah. Right I'm now, hiring right? for it right now. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, I'm hiring engineers to do the work that I don't want to engineer. Exactly. And I, I think that there is so much opportunity in that space. Like if you have an eye for identifying what someone doesn't want to do that's your foothold and that was my foothold for sure i like and so i found out like kind of through through this as i was working on stuff everyone hated doing the css and html part of it yes the ditch digging of the of the internet yeah 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 yeah. you gotta you gotta scaffold something out yeah either use a scaffolding tool or use Michael Chan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And this was before there was a lot of, you know, like, like now you can get a lot of templates. Uh, you know, Tailwind has a, a ton of stuff oh, yeah. that you can just use out of the box. This is before Fiverr, right? So, I mean, was, I was kind of providing yeah. that like Fiverr service, like to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Wow. Yeah. I, w- I wish I knew you back then because I had so many ideas, <laughs> but no one to build them. So I had, yeah. I, ta- I taught myself. <laughs> so yeah. I ended up building my own stuff. Yeah, you know, I think that this is, I mean, I know this is kind of focused on open source, but I think that this lesson kind of applies as well, is is that you, there is opportunity out there. Yeah. And like, if you're trying to break in, that has to be your focus, and there's no work that's beneath you. And like, that's something that I, like, it took, uh, like, a market crash and, like, living paycheck to paycheck for me to get to that point where I was like, there's no work that's beneath me. But once I got to that point, it was like, oh, okay, like, I get it now, right? Like, when you, when you want to try something new, you can't have anything be beneath you. Yeah. And this, I mean, this applies to open source, applies to creator stuff. I mean, I know that we've both, like, I remember, yeah. like, making, uh, like, there was this period where you were, like, making thumbnails for, like, YouTube, right? <laughs> yes. And I feel like there is nothing more, uh, like, degrading <laughs> than, like, being, uh, you know, Let's let's say middle aged person like just in your bedroom taking like cheesy photos for you know YouTube thumbnails and then like whatever but like that's that's the game yes and if you're not willing to play the game if you're not willing to like take that hit to your ego or whatever you think makes you awesome like yeah. you don't deserve the win yeah yeah and it's it's like a, it's a harsh statement as it as it sounds but it's also true because. Yeah. If you knew how to do CSS back in, I don't know what the year that you were doing this with Craigslist, but... It's like 2010, let's call it. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, so 2010, 2011, 2012, like prior to like all these sort of the boon of front-end JavaScript frameworks yeah. after jQuery, like you were a god <laughs> when all these other frameworks came out because you were building the frameworks at this point because you yeah. had enough enough at bats. Yes. And like, I, I remember st- distinguishly, uh, distinguishly, <laughs> distinctly <laughs> of, I don't know what word I was trying to say, but... I remember back in like 2013, my first dev job as a junior dev, and like we were building our own like hand built SaaS framework because yeah. like the front end engineers just knew what to do, yeah. And they they were the people who were doing all this sort of grunt work, yep. to make this site work. And I think it's the same thing. Like I see a lot of bootcamp grads learn like the React and learn like their their JavaScript server side rendered stuff, but like a, very few of them are, are willing to like go and do the like the CSS treatment or yeah. the sort of HTML email massaging for yeah. signatures uh, because sometimes people feel like if you pay the money to be due to bootcamp, you're, you are, that's beneath you Yeah, because you have yeah, to yeah. learn to step pa- past that. But I think that statement of like being able to do what other people don't want to do is like my entire career. Yes. Like the only reason I do front end is because the only person that would write JavaScript was me at the company. Yeah. And uh, so I learned front end JavaScript, learned React, learned React at a great time because then that just sort of propelled my career at yeah. that point. Yeah. Well, it's kind of funny how these things kind of ebb and flow because I feel like right now it's the opposite, right? Like everyone wants to be doing that front end, doing components, working with Tailwind, whatever it is. There's a lot of hype in that space. And 
the superpower, at least right now, is like, can you do the like the serverless stuff, the edge functions, yeah, the, like the backend stuff? MySQL is hot again, like all of a sudden. Yeah, right? thank, thank you, Planet Scale. <laughs> uh, but all these other database startups, they're all making databases cool. Yeah, like uh, Superbase is the we had uh, Koppel on this the show, and uh, they're they're making databases cool and like yeah. not just like no no SQL, but yeah. also Postgres. Like Postgres is now considered things that you can actually you can work on and yeah. contribute back to. Yeah. And it's it's wild but yeah, I think that there's always being someone who's like thinking about your career from the perspective of of like I don't know, like a contrarian perspective, right? Yeah. Like knowing being able to like identify the next wave of things and maybe not even just like in terms of wave but like identifying what's needed and not just the hype. Because yeah. like a lot of like, you know, it's like we like fly to that stuff as an yeah. industry. Right. And it's like there's always going to be like hype. There's always going to be excitement around this thing. But like if you're a person who can perform outside of the hype, it's like it's like shining a spotlight on yourself because yeah. it's like, OK, there's a mass over there and there's like five people doing this thing over here. Yeah. So like honestly, like if you're graduating a boot camp and you learn React and all the front end stuff, like yeah. scaffolding an API from a database, like you might currently also where we're hiring for <laughs> like you might find the job much much faster when you sort of like step outside yeah. that that sort of blob of people yep. chasing on this next thing and like so you mentioned like a couple of different technologies like tailwind yeah, uh, yeah something we're using at open source yeah. and uh we're also using, using storybook but we're also using like next.js for our, our new oh, platform cool. yep. that we're doing uh, and the reason for that it's like it's easy to have those frameworks that yeah. people can sort of step into and say like mm-hmm. i've seen this before yes like now I can get hired into a job, but also I can hire people who already yeah. know this stuff. And I think have, ha- like having a counterpoint to the conversation we're having as well, like it does make sense to also learn, you know, the cutting edge and yes. the, the exciting things because then you're going to eventually find a job. You might take a job for less money because everybody yeah. knows this stuff, mm-hmm. but at least you get that job. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think it's it, it's kind of like a mix of both, right? Yeah. Like you always have to... I. It's one thing that's always a challenge about any type of professional endeavor is that you have to be riding the wave while kind of like keeping your eye towards the the next thing yes. as well. And it's really hard because I think a lot of us just want to like find our lane and just like cruise. Yeah. But if you can if you can really embrace um I guess multiple focuses, like embrace your kind of like waning interest in things and apply yeah. apply it to extremes like greater extremes because i think there's there's some value in being someone who knows react really well and then also learning view a little yeah. bit right but there's more value in being someone who understands react really well and then learns about like mysql queries and like you yeah. know proficient like becoming proficient in that yeah. as well yeah so there's a saying where the dance is only good if the music's still playing and nice. I think they, like if you were learning, if you knew Angular JS and you were an expert in that, and then Angular 2 came out like years ago, like that was actually, that was a big inflection point on why yeah. React kind of took off when it did. Yep. Because uh, a lot of people were like, at that time, I worked at a company, we were using Angular JS. We had no bandwidth and no, <laughs> like we could not switch frameworks yeah, yeah. while also trying to raise the next round of funding. Yep. So we ended up, me and another engineer, we peeled off into working on a React project because, like, we were like the we were sort of R and D research and yeah, development yeah, for yeah. like the next wave, and uh, it worked out. And then the company made the decision to like move over to React. Yeah, but like that was something that was like we figured this out. We were cutting edge. We we took the chance to be able to build this like one off project that the project itself failed, like the actual side project. Sure. But <laughs> using React actually succeeded yeah. because then we were able to like scale out of like whatever that mess was for Angular 2, which is like a whole other story and um, folks can look that up <laughs> if you weren't around for that. But you know, like, the, going back to my statement about the dance and the, and the music still playing is like eventually things like the the web is only... Actually, I tell... This is, I used to mentor a boot camp and I tell everybody that you're only two years behind everybody because it moves so fast. Oh, that, interesting. Like, yeah, you learn React... But two years from now, there's like another flavor of React. Yeah. That you're gonna have to learn like all the like hooks. Hooks are like the big inflection point. Now React 18 is something that you have to be considerate if you have other stuff. And um yeah, in two years who we might be on solid or yeah. moved into spelt spelts. That's, yeah. that's a hard word. That's a really interesting insight. And I hadn't I hadn't 
thought about that, but it is true. Like I, I see so much, like so many people coming into the industry now really making a splash like yeah. pretty quickly because they just focus on like some technology and then all of a sudden the tables turn a little bit and like now that's a like core piece of infrastructure for a lot of companies. Yes. It's like now you're an expert in a thing that someone who has a, you know, prolific 20 year career is going to have to come up to speed on and yeah. it's it's wild yeah and it was uh, serverless functions were a thing for me as well like yeah I, I learned uh i was at netlify up until the point we launched Net netlify functions okay but up until the point we launched netlify functions i was learning all about serverless functions yeah and was like helping to do r d for like the future of this platform that we're we're building and uh the entire industry shifted to like oh you know what actually we don't need running servers for everything like serverless <laughs> yep. is a okay. Yeah. Um, mind you, I have tons of serverless functions that need to get upgraded to Node 16. <laughs> of um, course. So yeah. <laughs> that's painful. But for the years, I haven't paid for compute. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Wild. What's wild is I don't know how we got in this conversation. We were talking <laughs> about your origin story um, and that you were doing some Craigslist stuff. Did we mention what you did after Craigslist? Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah. So after Craigslist, I kind of did a lot of similar, like, similar stuff. So I got a job through a relationship that I had. Um, uh, someone had just picked up like kind of like the operations side of, um, it was like a, a e-commerce type company and they had a professional services division and they were building out websites kind of as these packages, right? And so it's like, you could do a full custom build, build, or you could pick one of these like three templates like off the shelf and okay. then they would have someone like me build it and be like for you. Right. Um, and so that actually got me into design systems, uh, oh, which is kind of a, it, kind of a funny transition, but I had the opportunity to like the, the work was extremely inefficient at the time. Cause it was like, they would have a designer and then they would give you like a mock-up of like the handful of changes they were allowed to make. And then I would have to construct this into a one-off like, you know, web, web page for this like company. Yeah. And it would take like, I don't know, like a week. Right. So you have like this 40 hour process and like, we weren't charging enough to like make that work. Um, and so I had kind of, I was really obsessed with the idea of making this a little bit more efficient. Like how could we take it from 40 hours to four hours? And it was just this kind of like integrating better with the designers, making sure we had a template there that we could just kind of quickly export assets to knowing that it was going to work in all the browsers. You know, this is back when we were still supporting like IE seven. So there was a lot of yeah. like kind of, there was a lot that had to go right in that. And so by setting up all of these these processes, these boundaries around what we could and couldn't allow in terms of changes, I was able to like get that down, you know, to like 10% of what the process was before. And it kind of got me on this this line of like just systematizing design. Like and I was really excited about the idea like what, what kept me excited about it was the idea of setting up bridges where there were moats before of like, yeah. oh, hey, like here's the design, right? And like, oh, here's the implementation. Like people yeah. are just like throwing things over the wall and not communicating. And I loved this idea of like sitting in that space of saying like, hey, both of our jobs can go a lot smoother if we just have a couple conversations. And yeah. uh, I've, I've just loved that ever since. And I think that's what, like design systems and and like UI implementation has always meant to to me is being able to to having an opportunity and taking advantage of an opportunity to communicate where there's been no communication. Yeah, yeah, and that's um so like design system was in around the time I was learning serverless. I didn't know about design systems, <laughs> yeah. uh, but I did know about being the only engineer doing front end code yeah. and working with one designer. So it was like a lot of. Uh, Here's a mock-up. Go make it pixel perfect. Good luck. Yeah. And then eventually we got to the point where it's like, oh, Figma and like Vision. Like I don't know what else was um, out there at the time. I think we were using Sketch to be quite honest. Yeah. Um, but then I would get like, oh, it's this many pixels, and this is the font yeah. size, and like this is the font. And then like design systems, as in like design tools, yeah. got better, and they got better yeah. to be close to engineers. So yep. that was an amazing time. Uh, cause I was coming from like, here's a Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Here's a screen grab. Totally. Like, make that. So 
the design system like ecosystem, I didn't know how long it's been around. I'm sure yep. it's been around because like I know CSS Conf or Front End Conf was a thing. Yep. In my hometown, actually in St. Pete. Nice. Um, I never went though, <laughs> but I knew all the people who went. And it's all those... always the local ones that you yeah. can never make, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so they had the Front End Conf, and I knew design systems was a thing. Um, but what I'm getting at is, like, we started building our own design system. Yeah. And at the time, Storybook had come out as an open source project. Yeah. Um, I don't remember. It was like a group of folks that built this. Yep. And it was like kind of like, it, it was mostly broken. Like it, it worked mostly if you just sure. stayed on the rails. Yeah. Uh, so we actually, one of our engineers that we hired more, another front end engineer, uh, he came on board uh, and he was able to unblock a lot of like getting Storybook working for oh, us. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. Uh, so we ended up using Storybook pretty early in like its, its trajectory, like nice. pre-chromatic. And uh, when it was just an open source project, and I loved it. I loved the fact yeah. that I could pick off the shelf. Like these are the pieces. Like I don't have to go scaffold all the stuff yeah. by scratch. It's like we already solved this problem. Like the buttons work this way. Yeah. The accordion works this way. The drop down works this way. And uh, it was all solved problems that we could just be like, okay, we're gonna build this page. Here, here's a um, a wireframe. Go build it. And I was like, I don't need to ask any questions. I've yeah. got the stuff to pick off the shelf. Yeah, and there's there's a huge amount of shareability that comes along with that too, right? Yeah. You can get it validated by the designer just with a link, right? You don't yeah. have to, you know, come up with these fancy like screen sharing or like push it, you know, to to production and like behind a feature flag or something like that. It's like yeah. just very. It, it removes a lot of friction in those those communication lines, which is, and then it gives you that lane. I mean, especially with components now, right? Yeah. It's like it gives you that lane to just be like, hey, I, I have what effectively amounts to a function that takes a couple arguments. Yes. And if you give me the right arguments, I don't care where they come from. Like, yeah. they're going to look like this. Yeah, and that's something that we... we so we started the, the process of open source earlier this year. We had a product that I've been working on for like five years. It was yeah. Like, still going to be around, not the future of the product. But then we built another thing that was like a, a side project. It was like, oh, cool. This was fun. It actually was much faster than five years ago. And then we were like, okay, well, the product that's going to make us money is going to be a little bit different than what we have. So let's start from scratch. And how would you start from scratch? We started with the design system. Mm -hmm. uh, so I ended up getting a designer on board pretty early on. I was like, hey, give us some Figma mocks. Like we're yeah. just going to stay in Figma for a while. And then once we made those decisions of like what the app will look like, we started building a design system. Yeah. And like we did not build it. We, don't, we didn't have a functional app until like only a couple weeks ago. And uh, it's because the first four weeks we yeah we working on this about at this time at this point eight weeks yeah so the first four weeks we were just building the design components yeah uh, because we knew we had to reuse the drop down the accordion yep. the buttons multiple places yeah like why reinvent the wheel or yep. pull from random libraries which is usually happens over the years you have like you got Bootstrap here you got Shocker over here you got Reach over here like yeah and then you got to make it all work together and then worry about like dependency management yeah. <laughs> So we do all that in a place that we have a sandbox, and yeah. uh, which I'm, I don't know, I might be selling your product, but what I'm getting <laughs> at is like, I, I enjoy it and I, yeah. I, I love the, the content you put out as well on, oh, on YouTube, which thanks. It's, a, it's a chromatic YouTube or is it your personal? Yeah, so I'm doing a little, I'm doing a little bit on both, but yeah, so that's, uh, oh, I'll look at this one. <laughs> it's uh, youtube.com slash C slash storyback, storyback. What's what's with what's with this? I'm gonna do it again. Story, story back, yeah. That's story uh, back. isn't that a Disney film about a horse? <laughs> we got story back. We got story blocks. We got story book. There's a lot. Okay. YouTube.com/slash/c/slash/storybookjs, and then my channel is. My, am I going through puberty again? <laughs> my, my channel is uh, YouTube.com/slash/sleep. I, as soon we, as I we can link camera, it in the description. There's something wrong with this camera. I just, I, I'm enjoying I look at watching it. you struggle, but I just want to say we can also link it below. <laughs> C slash Chantastic. I can't do Chantastic. it. Chantastic. I can't do it. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, yeah. Where did, where did the origin of Chantastic come from? I'm sure it probably just came up in school. Yeah. It, well, actually, uh, it's it, kind of funny. So I did. Uh, there was a phase of my life where I did uh, photography, event photography, and I was in this world of event photographers for a little bit, and uh, had a bunch of friends. Uh, from this, they were part of this Australian church plant and we'd all kind of like gotten to know each other a little bit yeah. through events and us shooting and them doing music and being cool Australians and whatnot. And, uh, love, love, love me some cool Australians. For sure. <laughs> They're awesome. They love to party. Uh, all of them, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just looping them all in there. Um, but, uh, I think, I think it started with them. They just, they, they'd see me and they'd be like, fantastic. I'm like, that's it. That's, that's what I'm going with from now on. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry to derail. But yeah. So 
I want to talk about what you're working on now at, at yeah. Chromatic. So yeah. you is your title advocate, developer advocate? Yeah, so I am a DX community engineer, which <laughs> I don't, I don't know exactly what That's it means. That's a lot of acronyms. Yeah, it is. It is. So developer experience, um, everyone at, like at this point in the startup um, of Chromatic is um, an engineer. So like yeah. we all can work on the product or the open source product or, you know, whatever. Um, you know, like companies go through different phases. And so, you know, at some point that will probably change. But like engineers in pretty much all of the, the titles. But um, basically what I focus on is a lot of just like outreach type stuff. So working on the YouTube channel to be able to get more education into more people's hands. But I mean, I guess I'm like a professional YouTuber by virtue of being paid to make YouTube videos. Yeah, right I mean, now. you got to milk it while you got it. I mean, <laughs> like and subscribe. <laughs> So I mean, one of my favorite, uh, not YouTube, but TikTokers is, um, is it uh, Figgy, which I think he calls himself Doctor Figma or something like that, okay. Professor Figma. <laughs> okay. Uh, but he's like, he's great at teaching Figma. Yeah. On TikTok. I'll have to check that out. Uh, I love it. So like, you should definitely get a TikTok if you don't have one yet. Uh, I've been, I've been dragging my feet on that. I've been I mean, if you're making thumbnails on YouTube. <laughs> I, you might as well just go ahead and just go all in at this point. You know, it's so funny. Like all this stuff is an inevitability, right? It's like you, anything that you, you your gaze falls on at some point, like you're going to be doing the, that, that at yeah. some point. So the, the, my TikTok origin story was <laughs> I was sitting in a meeting with a bunch of product managers and we were talking about the roadmap for GitHub. Yeah. And, uh, I ended up giving a pitch on like our strategy on YouTube. Like so we doubled the subscribers in YouTube in like yeah. a, less than a year. Sweet. So it was like, one of the PMs was, they said, hey, since we're doing like YouTube, like, should we th consider TikTok, you know, the capture of the Gen Z audience? And I'm like, <laughs> no, <Lol. laughs> we're not dancing. It's just like when I was laughing about React, like yeah, now yeah. I'm writing React all day. Uh, so I was like, oh, you know what? I laughed about this, but let me actually go research this and find out all the adults that are yeah. on YouTube, or sorry, TikTok. And I found them. And then I found all the tech people. And it was like, not a lot of folks, so like Scott Hanselman and Cassidy yeah. Williams. Yep. And uh, well, there's other people who, um, Shimmy, Emily, uh, sure, who also. Sure. Anyway, what I'm getting at is like, uh, you know what? I think I could probably make some TikTok. So I had some downtime during the holidays and I was like, let me do a TikTok. And my first TikTok was, uh, it was like this uh, meme about the end of black movies where it's always like there's, they, they show like a Tyler Perry movie. They show everybody in the cast and like what they're doing next or whatever. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Um, I was like, the, the joke was the, the, the meme that I did for the end of the, the movie is like the music cuts freeze frames on you and you smile <laughs> kind of like family matters. Um, but what I'm getting at is the, I was like console.log butts and I zoomed in on that and then zoomed out and then looked at myself and then said, <laughs> Got a six-figure job, but still can't exit them. Like, <laughs> it, it had no correlation, but it just took off. Like, it blew up. Yeah, And I was yeah. like, oh, okay, I guess I'm doing TikToks now. That's so funny. Are you still doing it? I, I am. I just did one yesterday, actually. That's so funny. I Like, it's it's interesting because I feel like with each new platform, it's really scary. Uh, oh, yeah. That's such a childish word. I don't know why it sounded so silly coming out of my mouth, but like a uh, very vulnerable moment for me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is daunting to know, like, because like when you do content, you're in, you, you might not know this, but like when well, you know this, but like people listening might not know this, like you invest in that ecosystem. So yeah. it's either you like, you got to get past the first seven yeah. or you're dead. Yeah. And you're just never going back to it. So like the goal for this was like, we're just going to get the first six nice. recorded, get those published. And then now we're consistent. Yeah. And uh, with TikTok, it's just like, I committed to one a day. And yeah. uh, just kept going and then eventually got down to like only two or three a week. Yeah. But I grew a very small following and got more consistent. Yep. And the, the beauty of TikTok, which is so many problems with TikTok with like uh, <laughs> security and uh, like what a uh, quick logging and stuff like that. But what I'm getting at is it has a really good audience of that. Yeah. If you want to discover like discovery to point to something else, Yeah. Uh, which for my personal YouTube, I point everybody from TikTok to my YouTube. I, I get organic YouTube subscriptions from TikTok. Really? It's like magic. Wow. And uh, like watch like you're doing d developer experience, but basically developer relations. Like you, once you figure out those channels and those pipelines, yeah, yeah. you just continue to milk that and like you grow an audience. So like me doing DevRel, my whole, my whole goal in DevRel is to create more advocates mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not just not to hire them, but more of like if I can get somebody who's excited about the product in the community, they can go run with it. Yeah. Then like you're pretty much golden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's interesting that that kind of a lot, like what you were saying a second ago, the idea of getting getting to seven uh, is super interesting and true. And I've 
I've been thinking about that a lot as like, I was very afraid of YouTube. I've, I've put YouTube videos out there before, but like I was afraid of committing to it yeah. in the way that you have to commit in order for it to work for you. Right. Yeah. You know, I could put vid videos up there just be like, you know, me, you know, recording in loom and be like, Hey, this is how you do this thing. Like feeling real cool about myself because I was like, yeah, like I'm not doing the YouTube thing. I'm just putting my videos there. Right. And like it's it's really frightening to have to like subject yourself to the game, right? Because yeah. like all these platforms, they have a meta, they're a game, and if you don't participate, you don't get the rewards. Yeah. And it is like very humbling to have to like put your content yeah. through someone else's lens. But like I don't know, I, I came up with my goal, a goal for myself about like about this, which is just like my goal right now is just to get videos out, right? Like 500 videos and then I can come back and be like, okay, how do I, like, how do I insert more of myself into this? Like, how do I like think about this platform a little bit better? But like right now it's like, you, I just got to get on all of them, put videos up and yeah. like not think about it too much. Yeah. It, it, it is the inertia. And also the, the beauty is that having a backlog actually helps sustain yes. like you're being able to like relax because yeah. if someone finds the video from last week, it doesn't matter if you don't upload for three three weeks or even three months. Yeah. They're going to find the 500 videos. Right. And I think a lot of people, they, they forget. Cause like you actually used to do a podcast, right? I did. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I would love to do it again, but it's like, you know, life happens, you know, yeah. it's like, you're always yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so like you decided like it's, sun is it sunset or is this like pause? Did you say goodbye? I didn't say goodbye. So, so have, I guess technically it's paused. Yeah. yeah, yeah but are, yeah, uh, the business day, they, they call it pod fading. Pod so, <laughs> yeah. So you, you pod faded, yeah. but you can, t you can come back no matter what. I have a podcast. Yeah. Uh, I have many of them, but I have one called this developing story and I pod fade that all the time. Yeah. And it's like when I'm in a moment and I'm like, you know what? Uh, last year I was doing Twitter spaces Yep. yep. and I was generating Twitter spaces in the podcast, uh, yeah. intentionally. So I invited guests and I was very intentional. I'll be open about this. I don't have a very strong network of female engineers mm. or non-male basically just yeah. in general. I, I do have friends, I have colleagues, but I just wanted to expand yeah, my yeah, network. Yeah, yeah, So I only interviewed female and non-male engineers uh, earlier this year on, on Twitter Space, made awesome. it my podcast. And yeah. then I spun up the podcast again throughout those interviews. And then I was like, okay, cool. My network expanded. I'm just going to pod fade this until yeah. I have another idea. Yeah. And uh, it's just really like this. We just talk about people's developing stories. Yeah. I yeah. Oh, sorry. I mean, no, no, yeah. There was uh, another thing I wanted to ask, but anyway, go, go ahead because I no, just blanked. I love that idea because I mean, even just yesterday, someone hit me up on Twitter and I'm like, Hey, like I just found your podcast. Like there's a really cool backlog. I'm enjoying like going through that. And it is, I think I forget about the value of that sometimes. So it's yeah. like, Oh, okay. Like, you know, this is still meaningful to people. And I don't know. I think that there is a part of me that wants to go back and kind of pull tease out the pieces of that show that are evergreen right yeah. the advice that people have you know the advice that people like shared with me and our audience at the time yeah. that will always be true and this actually i, I mean like <laughs> I, I hope you don't mind me bringing no, no, no. this to open yeah, source yeah, or whatever it. um i think that kind of like this uh this idea of this thing, this project that I have in my mind that I will never do. Um, and then also kind of like the way that I broke into this industry of doing work that other people didn't want to do. Yeah. Um, I think that breaking into open source or like any type of tech field, like there are a lot of, you know, open source is effectively like a marketing arm. Yes, like, <laughs> I, it is. No, no one's going to really like flat out admit this. You did, but, <laughs> but like open source folks want to keep it pure. But in reality, like why is a company open source or project? Yeah. Is it for recruiting? Is it for exposure? Is it for finding customers to sell a course? <laughs> yeah. To sell a course, which is a great way to make money in open source. Uh, but like what I'm getting at is like, you're, you're 100% 100 correct. But uh, comment below if you think we're incorrect. <laughs> we're not, but <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, we gotta we gotta drive engagement. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Comment below. Um, yeah, like, and and I think it's like when you think, when your your mind opens up to the idea that open source is marketing for something else, you realize the game of it, 
right? Yeah. Like it, in the same way that like YouTube is a game, TikTok is a game, yeah. like open source is a game and the game is marketing something else. And like yeah. using the hype of this thing being free and exposed and you know open for all yeah. of the ways that it is, um, using that to drive hype to something else. Yeah, and like I'm sure someone's sitting like, they're like, no, I just built this thing because I just wanted to open source it, put it on GitHub, get a couple stars, that's all I wanted. But in reality, like you're 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 hyping your brand. Yeah. Because like if that thing takes off or if you get contributors or if you find the job because of that, like you should 100% do that. Yeah. Because that's going to hype you <laughs> to your next thing. And like don't be shy about it. Because yeah. like the people who are shy about it, the people who are like, oh, I don't know how I can't break into the tech and stuff like that. Like be okay with like promoting yourself. Yes. And that's, that's as, as content creators, <laughs> we know how to promote ourselves <laughs> yeah, uh, at I, BWO at all platforms. <laughs> yeah. I think, you know, and it's funny cause you had, you added in that at the end of it, like get a couple stars, right? And no matter how pure your thought is around like what you're doing with open source if you want a star there is a part of you that is a marketer yes and like you just have to realize like that is the gateway into like what open source is all about and i mean like love it or hate it like it's the game right yeah and i don't know i feel like you know it, i feel like for both of us we have learned a lot of lessons the hard way yeah. Right. And it took us a lot to like get to a point in our career where we like things clicked and it was like, oh, okay, like I see the structure for this. I see the like the importance of this thing to that thing. And I think that, you know, if you want to shortcut like and get past all the pain of like, what am I doing in open source? Like, is what I'm doing making a difference? Like, can I make money in this thing? You have to see it as a marketing strategy. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, 100%. Because the, at the end of the day, like, and I was going to ask you earlier when you were talking <laughs> about the game and I made that sort of dance quote, um, what, like, what is the game of open source? And like, what, <laughs> and like, so we answered that question just now. But the other thing I wanted to mention too as well is like the being okay with doing the stuff that no one else wants to do. That is also in the ethos of open source because like I've had tons of these conversations so far and there are, are maintainers, uh, just recently, Chance, I was talking to him yeah. about Reach UI and that, that was a thing that he doesn't have bandwidth to still keep going, but he has bandwidth now. And he would totally like mentor somebody to like yeah. help contribute, but that, that takes a lot more time. So mm -hmm. it's either write code or mentor or do both, or like can't really do both. I guess what I'm getting at is like open the issues, solve the problems of the issues you open, because the good first issues are the things that you open. Like I did a tweet that was, um, I like that. The good first issues don't exist. And it's the reason why they don't exist is because you haven't opened them. So like everybody nice. walks into a repo and says, man, I wish I could find a good first issue, but they're all taken. And the truth is like the best ones that get opened up in open source are the ones that the person that opened them assigns themselves yeah. and works on. And like, is if you if you want a friend, you got to be a friend, and if you want to do open source, you got to contribute to open source by opening issues, asking questions, yeah, like being helpful as a force. So like, we're in like a, a field where like tech, everything's just so easy. You open up your MacBook, you like brew install stuff or whatever the new uh, installer is, and then you just consume, yeah, and eventually you just continue to consume until yep. you, like, you grow your career and then you retire, or you can produce. Yeah. And I think with content creation, producing sets the stage so much more for like sure. where people now reach out to you for storybook. Yeah. I, if I may, <laughs> I, I want to add like one more thing to that yeah. is I think that a lot of times, like, so, you know, something that's kind of, you know, maybe slightly insecure for me is like, you know, you know, knowing that we're going to talk about open source, like I haven't actually made a lot of contributions to like open source projects, but like I have contributed in ways that are like non like GitHub, right? So like yeah. things where like I'm learning about an open source project and sharing stuff that I'm learning like on social media or blog yeah. posts and all that kind of Which stuff. Which is technically a contribution. It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so like I if think, I can Google and find your stuff, you contributed to the to the project. Exactly, and so I think that there's there's a whole host of ways that you can contribute that don't even require that. Um, maybe like awkward piece of like, you know, going in, like kind of slamming down somebody's, you know, front door with an issue and whatnot. <laughs> yeah. Just walk in their house and be like, Hey, I wrote some code for you. <laughs> Merge it now. <laughs> Where do I put all these bags? <laughs> yeah, no, that's I definitely not the way to approach it. But the, the one thing as far as the open source platform, like we are focused on code contributions today. Yeah. Yeah. But I want to actually, 
uh, actually, we have a mutual connection, which is AJ, AJC Web Dev. Yes, um, Anthony. Anthony is Love you, buddy. yeah, amazing person, and his contribution to so many projects, including yeah. Redwood JS, mm-hmm. is actually content. Yeah, he's actually writing a blog post and doing helping out with like the tutorials. Yeah, that don't live on Red, Redwood properties. Like yeah. he's just creating tutorials of like, hey, here's how you install this thing. Here's yeah. how you get unblocked here. Yep. Here's how you do that because he found a niche uh, or a niche, whatever it is, <laughs> of where no one, everyone that was doing Redwood was like contributing code. Yes. But no one was talking about Redwood. Yes. And then once he started doing that, people were just like, oh, of course. Yeah. We content. Yeah. So like, and I tell everybody who wants to get an open source, like don't try to contribute first, write a blog post. Yeah. Under your first look at storybook or yeah. first install on storybook, first plug in storybook. Like that is the ecosystem that builds and then says yeah. like, it's exactly what happened for react. People build stuff outside of react in a great ecosystem and now everyone using the react. Yeah. And like, you just can't avoid it. You know, it's so funny. It's like my, like my job right now, like what I get paid to do is I make videos. I surface all of the things that are painful and then document those. Yep. And then someone makes the tool better, right? Like it's like, it, and like you can break into that. That is something that is like, all of us can do because we all have to learn these stuffs to this, these stuffs. We have to learn this stuff to do our job anyway. And so like you just, you know, you write about it, you document the paper cuts and like you're contributing. Yeah. So like instead of good first issues, good first videos Hey, by Chantastic. <laughs> that sounds like a playlist right there. I like it. Good first videos. Yeah. So Let's go. Uh, we got to wind down, uh, but I do appreciate you inviting us to your home, <laughs> to yeah. your space. Yeah. 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 Literally Thanks the place you work. Here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, th- looking forward to more content folks like, and subscribe to Chantastic. Like, and subscribe, but also open sauce as well. <laughs> and uh, with that, stay saucy. Stay saucy. Stay saucy.